Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I have my ultimate naturalist guide for you guys. I hope that this guide helps. In this guide I will be focusing on everything that you need to know about the naturalist role, my personal tips and tricks on how to get this thing leveled up, what to do, what not to do, and if I miss anything let me know down below and if you guys have any other questions or I don't cover a specific thing let me know down below in the comments. I'll try to reply to as many, many people as I can. I hope that you guys enjoy this video, Ultimate Naturalist Guide, here we go. Okay, so starting off with this guide, the first thing that you should do before you buy the Naturalist Roll, now remember the Naturalist Roll will cost 25 gold, don't buy any microtransactions, you can grind the gold easily, do daily challenges, do stranger missions, wait till the last minute, do bounty hunter missions if you have that also, and eventually you will get 25 gold. But you don't need to buy gold bars in order to unlock it. Now, before you even buy the Naturalist Roll, I recommend that you get the Outlaw Pass. Now the Outlaw Pass will cost 40 gold if you have that grinded get the outlaw pass because the outlaw pass you will get all the gold back so you will get that 40 gold back plus you'll get many rewards the outlaw pass but relating it to the relating it specifically to the naturalist role you will get 2000 free naturalist xp if you level up the nat if you level up the outlaw pass plus you will get a 15% boost right away for xp on the naturalist role then you will get a 25% boost and then you'll get a 30% boost so this will help you out a lot the outlaw pass will give you plenty of money back all your gold and will help you level up the naturalist role so if you don't have it, get it, because it will help you out a lot. Now, when you purchase the Naturalist Roll from Harriet, you will get the, the Animal Field Guide, and you will get the Sample Kit. Let's focus on the Animal Field Guide first. Now, the Animal Field Guide, this will cover pretty much every single ground animal in the game. The only animals that will not be covered in this field guide are going to be fish and birds, but pretty much every single animal on the ground will be covered in this field guide. And for most of the animals, you will have to track them. So you will have to basically just go on their scent. So whenever, you know, you activate eagle vision, you just hit the button to track. That's it. It's completed in the book. You will have to also study a lot of the animals. Studying, basically, you come up behind the animals and you hold R1 on the PS4 or you hold the RT on the Xbox. I'm not sure what button this would be on the PC. But what you can also do is at a distance, if you have binoculars, you can actually study the animal with binoculars, which would probably be easier. Just make sure that the animal doesn't spot you because you can still study the animal when it spots you, but it can be a little bit annoying chasing it. So you gotta track the animal, you gotta study it. Now, not every single animal is studyable. Some animals are not studyable. A lot of the legendary animals are not studyable. Now, you also have, have to kill them you have to skin them, and on top of that, you have to sedate them. Now, sedating is a new thing. In order to sedate an animal, you would have to buy sedative rounds, and this you buy from Harriet. Make sure you stock up max 200, because these go pretty quickly. Now, to sedate an animal, you would hit the animal multiple times. Now, for some smaller animals, this would be two to three shots. Some medium animals, I believe around five to six shots and some larger animals up to eight shots. Now you can speed this process up by hitting them in the head, but I always just found it easier to start spamming at their chest and just keep shooting them, especially if there's a bunch of animals that you wanna sedate. And then when the animal is sedated, the the X will actually turn red. That's how you know the animal is sedated. The animal will limp for a little bit, a few more meters, and then it'll fall. You run right up to the animal and you sedate the animal. This brings me to my next point, which is for the animal reviver. Now you can buy animal revivers from Harriet also, but the animal revivers, in my opinion at least, they're a giant waste. They cost $5 each. And what do you get for that $5? You get basically 10 XP for the naturalist roll. That's all you get. I don't think that that's worth it. I stopped. I bought full max animal revivers and then when I used them all up, I didn't buy any more. You can craft them. You can buy a crafting thing from cra crafting pamphlet from Harriet, but it's just not worth it in my opinion. It's not worth it's not worth reviving the animals. It's just a waste. Now, as for legendary pheromones, those are kind of a waste also. I will be covering those a little bit later when I talk about legendary animals. Additionally, to complete the specific animal in the guide, you also have to take a picture of the animal, and this can be at a good distance just as long as the animal is in frame. I recommend not spooking the animal, so if you can sneak up on the animal, that will be the best time to take a picture of it. And I recommend that you use the advanced camera. This costs $540 in the hunting and fishing catalog in the general store, so pick that up. You can move around with it more, it's more mobile, and you can crouch with it, so it's just a lot more useful. 
And on top of that, I forgot to mention, you cannot skin an animal that has been sedated. So it's either you sedate the animal or you skin the animal. In this update, I recommend that you that you sedate the animals because you will, when you sell this to Harriet, you will get a lot more XP. I will cover this a little bit later as well. Now, what does the field guide do for you? The field guide doesn't really do much. The only thing that it will help with is it'll help you identify the name of the animals because originally it's kind of grayed out, but when you find the animals, they will all be marked in the book. And completing an animal does not really do anything. I've completed an entire set of just all the information in here. Now, this is different from getting samples for all the animals. That is actually rewarded. But in terms of like completing the guide for like a set of animals, you don't really seem to get anything. You just take photographs, you skin the animal, kill it, that's it. You just complete it as like a journal entry. It does not help you with XP or doesn't really help you with uh, money making. Now, as for the sedation, this is really important. And some animals cannot be sedated, like really small animals, like, you know, very small critters. Those, if you shoot them with the sed sedative rounds, they will die, so make sure that you keep that in mind. And like I said, an animal that's sedated, you cannot skin this, so it's either you skin the animal or you sedate the animal. Now, sedating, this is very different than just completing the, the book guide, because sedating helps it a lot. Now, when you sedate an animal, you take that animal sample. Now, if you bring this back to Harriet, you can sell the sample. And if you sell all of the all of the samples of our particular set, like in this case, mountain and grassland habitats, I have the entire set, I have all of them. When you sell one, you will get a stamp on it. So in this case, you see this stamp on a lot of these animals here. I am missing three here, but I have stamps on all the other animals, and I'm going to turn in the other three animals now. So when you get all of them stamped here, you can sell this as a collection. And this is how you make the bulk of your money in the naturalist role, is you are going to get all these stamps, so you get samples from all of these animals here in a, in a specific set, and then you sell it to Harriet. Now this one that I'm selling, the mountain one, this one is around $140. And I can easily complete this in an hour. So I can easily get all of these animals, I can find all of them in an hour, and if I play throughout the day, I do different activities, I can look for those animals, and I can find them. There are other sets, like for instance the farmland set, and the farmland set, most of these animals are in farms and pens, and it's kind of boring, you sedate them, and you get their samples, and then you get them stamped, and you sell them to Harriet. You only get $60 for it. I don't really think it's that it's worth it unless you're trying to rank up. Almost all of these, I've noticed, they give you 1,000 XP whenever you rank up. I haven't sold a legendary set. I wonder if that gives you 1,000 XP. But the legendary set is something that would take days and days of collecting because it's just such a rare one. I'll, I'll mention the legendary ones a little bit later, but let's focus on the regular ones now. Now, there's also the desert collection. There's the wetlands collection. Mountain and grasslands, that's my favorite. And you also have forests. Common Critters is not a collection, it's just in there, it looks like it is, but it's not. And then we have the legendary ones. Now the Mountains and Grasslands, I personally think that's the best one. I just like that one because it's almost all medium animals on there. The smallest animal on there is the Badger, which is a pretty common animal. And there's also the Coyote. The Coyote is pretty common. You have White-tailed Deer, White-tailed Buck, American Pronghorn Doe, American Pronghorn Buck. You have the Bison, you have the Wild Boar. It's pretty easy to get these. You have the rams, you have the sheep, you have the elk, you have the cow elk. These are pretty easy to get. And they're mostly all located in relatively easy areas. And you get $140 whenever you complete this. And I have completed this set multiple times. This It's how I have leveled up most of the naturalist role is just doing this one specifically. And I'll also explain to you guys where I find all of these animals and the pattern that I follow. Now, for the badger, and for the boar. The badger and the boar and the coyote as well. These three animals, because there's 14 in the mountain and grassland set. This, these animals I find south of Rhodes, right at Bulger Glade, the old Civil War battlefield. If you ride around this area, day or night, you will find a bunch of badgers. You can see in this clip, I found a bunch of badgers. They're relatively small, very easy to sedate. You just shoot them a few times, shoot them two, three times, they're sedated. The boars will also spawn around this area. Boars take a bunch more shots, but you just shoot them, sedate them. Coyotes, they will also spawn around this area, but coyotes, they will pretty much spawn around most of the map. So that's those three animals in that area, Bulgur Glade. We got the badger, we got the boar, and we got the coyote. Now, moving on, the next set of animals, I go to the Great Plains. Now, in the Great Plains, I find 
a few animals. I find the bison. Now the bison, these will only spawn in the daytime, so it has to be the daytime. And the bison are rel relatively easy to find. You just basically ride around. They're very difficult to miss. They're very huge animals. You will see a, the bison. When you see the bison, try to knock out a bunch of them. Try to sedate a bunch of them. Just start spamming at their chests. Knock out as many of them as you can because they only spawn in the daytime, so this is the animal that you're probably going to get the least amount of samples for. So get as many bison samples as you can. Then after you do that, look around for American pronghorn buck and American pronghorn doe. These deer are very, they're very common around this area. You will find them no problem. On top of that, you can also find white-tailed deer and white-tailed buck, another two animals right in this area. If we move into tall trees, we move right into tall trees. In tall trees, we can find the Rocky Mountain bull elk. We can find also the Rocky Mountain cow elk, and we can find the gray wolves. Now, the gray wolves, these, they tend to spawn more at night. They will attack you there. When you find them, just knock them out since they're in a pack. Get the samples from them. Now, as for the remaining animals, what I like to do is I like to fast travel to Coulter right in the Amberino region. So I go in the Amberino region, the snowy area, and over the snowy area, you'll find the rest of them. You'll find the Rocky Mountain bull elk. You'll find the Rocky Mountain cow elk. You will find the white-tailed deer here. You will find the white-tailed buck. You'll also find timber wolves. Timber wolves are the other wolves. They will spawn around here. Just keep riding around. Usually at night, they tend to spawn more, and they, a group of them will attack you. You can find the rams up here, and you can find the sheep. So that is the areas that I used to find all the mountains and grassland um, habitats. Now, GTA series has a more detailed guide on the locations, but I basically go to those three locations. Go to Bulger Glade, I get the boar, I get the badger, and I get the coyote. I go to the Great Plains, I get the bison, I get the American pronghorn buck and the pronghorn doe. I can also get white-tailed deer and white-tailed bucks. I then go to tall trees, get the gray wolves, and I can also get the Rocky Mountain bull elk, the Rocky Mountain cow elk, and then I'll go to Snowy Amberino for the rest of them. And the Snowy Amberino, the reason that I like this area so much for getting samples is because this area is like one of the more isolated parts of the map, so barely anybody's up here. And the animals leave tracks in the snow. So it's pretty easy to notice animals up here and barely anybody goes up here. So you don't have to worry about other players interfering with you. Now that I've gotten all those samples, let's talk about the most important thing with the naturals, the most important mistake that people make. Now the most important mistake that people make is they sell duplicates. Now you never ever want to sell duplicates. And what I mean by that is, take a look at this example here. I, I, showed the sale a little bit earlier, but there's something really important um, to notice here again. You see how I, ha I have three animals that are not stamped on here. I already have the samples, but I have way more samples than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully look through the book here. I'm going to see those three animals that, that I don't I don't have stamped, and I'm going to sell those three animals to Harriet. I'm not going to sell any other duplicates. If I sell those other duplicates, the animals are not going to get stamped a second time, meaning you're, it's going to waste, because you will get XP and you'll get some money for those samples, but you will not be able to sell another collection. What you want to do is you want to get them all stamped, then go to your animal field guide, sell the collection, then any duplicates that you have, go up, go up to Harriet, get them all stamped again, and you see I made three sales here. I made three sales here, and I made another sale actually um, a few hours before this, so I made four sales in total just with this, going through those areas and getting all those samples repeatedly, just spamming groups of animals with sedative rounds. So again, this is very important. Do not sell the, the, the doubles, because then, or even the triples, depending on how many you have, because that will then go to waste. Sell them all to Harriet, make sure that they are stamped. When they're all stamped, sell the collection. Then sell the other doubles to Harriet, check which ones are stamped, and if they're all stamped, at that point, then sell the collection. And just keep keep doing that. Do not sell them all to Harriet at once, because all the collections are going to go to waste. This is very, very important. Do not sell the duplicates, because I, I started making this mistake early on, where I just kept selling every duplicate to her, and then I was like, oh no, I messed up. I could have sold so many more collections, and I would have been level 20 much earlier had I not made this mistake. So you really want to watch out for this. Do not make this mistake. Additionally, I recommend that you only focus on just one specific category. Like me, that's all I'm doing is mountain and grassland because I know that really well and I can make money from that no problem 
$140 in less than an hour while I run different other activities. I know where those animals spawn, no problem. Some of the other ones, like the wetlands, for instance, trying to find all the different snakes, that could be a pain to do. Um, the desert one also has a lot of animals. The forests, that one is... A little easier, but it also has some smaller animals that can be a little bit more challenging to find. The farmlands one, that's the easiest one besides the mountain and grassland in my opinion, but that one, that one is just really boring and there's just very little money to be made from it. I recommend you just focus on one category and you can get samples from other animals, but don't go crazy with it. If you're going to constantly keep getting samples, get samples from the same category, because if you get samples from all different types of categories and you have so many different samples stocked up and then you're trying to avoid duplicates to her, when you go through that and go through the book trying to see what you have stamped and what you don't have stamped, that's going to make you go crazy because of all the different animals in there. So just focus on one category. Don't go crazy with everything else because then there's going to be so much to go through and constantly check and just focus on one category and it will be a lot easier for you. Trust me, I've been doing that. Just focus on one category and it is a lot easier. Now moving on here, I know I'm going to have a bunch of people in the comments asking me about Harriet spraying you. Now, if you kill a certain amount of animals in a short period of time, Harriet will get angry at you and it'll, it'll pop up a little message in the corner of your screen saying that Harriet will be unhappy with you if you keep killing animals. If you kill enough animals, you will get this animation where she knocks you out and then you can't talk to her for a few minutes. And this can be very frustrating and this is why I recommend that you always stock up on ammo. Every single time you go to see Harriet, stock up on sedative rounds because you never know when you're going to be locked out. I've been locked out before right when I needed sedative rounds and that can just be really annoying. And it doesn't make any sense either considering the field guide that she sells you, she tells you the field guy tells you to kill animals and skin them and she's getting pissed off at you for that, that doesn't really make much sense. Like I said in my previous video, I get that it's for her character, that she's, you know, this environment character that she wants to protect the environment, protect wildlife, but at the same time it just does not make sense that she would sell you a guide telling you to kill animals but then gets angry at you for doing so. So I have figured out kind of one way to get around this where you can kill a lot of animals and she will not get angry at you. And I don't know if this is going to be patched in the future. I don't know if Rockstar, you know, intended for this to happen. So, you know, this could change. But from what I've seen, if you lasso animals and knife them, she will not get angry at you. I think that this is just something that Rockstar missed. I think that when you get the knife animation, when you kill the animal with a knife, I don't think they programmed this animation to count for Harriet, only when you shoot animals. So if you want to be able to skin animals and you don't want her getting pissed off at you, then lasso the animal. I've lassoed a bunch of animals, as you can see right here, lassoed like five animals in a short period of time, and she did not get angry at me. But the moment that I fired and shot one animal, I got the notification that she's getting angry at me. If I shot that many animals in that short a period of time that I lassoed, she would have locked me out of her shop. So if you're going to be going for animal kills and you don't want Harriet to be pissed off at you, then lasso. Obviously, you're limited to a certain amount of animals that you can lasso, but like most medium animals like deer, you can lasso. You can lasso elk as well. So these animals, you can lasso them and you can kill them with a knife and you can avoid Harriet getting angry at you. But like I said, this can change in the future, so just be careful with this. Okay, so now let's talk about legendary animals and some of the extra missions. Now, there are poacher missions that you have in this DLC, and these are unlocked from right at the start of the naturalist role. You can go up to Harriet when you press square on the PS4, or you press X on the Xbox for missions. And the poacher missions are basically the same thing as Moonshiner missions. Uh, they're no really, they're no difference in the bootlegging missions, they're just a generic mission theme towards the naturalist dlc and it's almost always where you're going to a location killing a bunch of poachers and then freeing an animal you don't get any money from it you get some xp which can help you level up early on but once you get past like the higher levels you're at level 20 these missions become pretty useless now as for legendary animals now legendary animals these you can find across free mode and they can spawn randomly in places yeah as you level up through the roll, you will unlock the ability to spot legendary animals at greater distances, and they will also spawn more frequently. However, it's very difficult to find them in free mode. You do have a map which shows the general location of where the animal would be. There's only two, two legendary animals that I found in free mode, and I've been exploring the whole map, you know, these last few days since this update came out. I only found two in free mode. I found a bunch of missions, but only two in free mode. I found one, which was the Marble Fox. I found that south of 
south of Coulter, it appeared for me. You have this yellow question mark that will appear for you, and I recommend that every single time you spot a legendary animal, if it's the first time that you spotted that animal, I recommend that you sedate the animal. Do not do not kill the animal. Now, you can kill the animal if you want, and this will get you a pelt with gust, which I'll talk about a little bit later, but it's much better to sedate the animal and you get a sample because then you can sell that to Harriet, you get plenty of XP for also selling the sample, and you'll be able to start working it towards a specific collection that you can sell for legendary animals, which, like I said, those are between $400 to $700. Those will take you probably a few days. I can't really see anybody completing a legendary animal collection in a day unless, you know, they're really grinding the game like crazy because it's just such a time-consuming thing, but check in with Harriet. Once you're past level 5, you will have special missions that will be unlocked for you and when you look through these legendary animals that spawn make sure you check your animal field guide see what legendary animals you have not gotten yet spawn that mission and go for it these missions you know they can range from you looking for clues the legendary animal will spawn or it could be a mission where you have to free a bunch of animals from cages and then the legendary animal will spawn legendary animals you cannot lock onto them so you have to free aim them and on top of that the animals they take a lot you know they're pretty powerful. They oftentimes will attack you, like I've been attacked by the bison, legendary bison. I've been attacked by the legendary boar. We have the elephant gun in the game. That was a new gun. I will be doing a further review on this gun. And this gun, it can take down legendary animals in a few shots, but it still takes a decent amount because, again, these legendary animals are pretty, are pretty armored. As for the legendary animal pheromones, I don't recommend buying those. I don't really think that they're helpful. They're really expensive. They cost $30 for something that you don't necessarily know is going to work. And whenever you get the notification for the legendary animal, you get that little yellow question mark. You just keep going towards it, and you'll eventually find it. I found legendary animals every single time I've gotten the yellow question mark in missions and in free mode. I did not need the legendary animal fair modes. That's at least my opinion. I don't think they're worth it. Now, Moving on to the end of this, we also have two new free mode events. We have, first of all here, we have Protect the Legendary Animal. And these free mode events, you should do these early on whenever you see them pop up because they will help you level up the naturalist. In Protect the Wild, Protect the Legendary Animal, we have to protect a legendary animal as it makes its way from one side to another side of the map. And I got in the Tall Trees location every time. I don't know if there's another location besides Tall Trees, but I've done this mode three times. And that's the location I've gotten. And basically what we've done here is we escort an elk from poacher. So we escort an elk and protect it from poachers. That's all you pretty much do. It's really a really boring free mode event. Very, very boring. It takes usually 10 minutes for the elk to get there. You do get the sample from the elk afterwards and you do get it marked in your animal field guide if you haven't already so there is that but other than that it's just boring the other one is what is wild animal tagging and this is one where you will ride around and you will try to find those specific animals you only have one life in this mode and when you find that animal you sedate it and then everybody in the group gets credit for that and if you complete this everybody will get a bunch of samples and legendary animals can also spawn during this so this one is more worth doing so do them early on when you're trying to level up your naturalist. The wild animal tagging you should always do as protect the legendary animal. When you're at level 20, you might not want to do that anymore because it's just so boring in my opinion at least. And here at the end we have Gus. I decided to leave him for last because he doesn't play that much of a role in the DLC. From the first cutscene you would think he would play a bigger role. But Gus basically, how he works is he's just another butcher in a way. You can sell him pelts and, and meat. You can also sell him legendary pelts, but he doesn't play much of a role in that. You can convert the, some of the legendary pelts into like specific coats. That's how I managed to craft the marble coat because I killed the marble fox and I had him craft it for me. But you have to sell him the pelt first. Then when you sell him the pelt, then you can craft the coat or the hat or whatever else that you are crafting depending on if you have those resources. So Gus, just another butcher in a way. He does have the trinkets, which the trinkets, they actually do play a significant role. Now the trinkets they will give you different abilities now you need to find different jewelry for them and also different um animal animal like parts alongside them and some of these trinkets they will give you 10 percent more horse bonding they will let you find more herbs they will decrease the rate at which you drain stamina so gus would be very useful for the trinkets and you can also buy some ammunition for from him like the elephant gun but other than that there's not much more um to gus 
At the end, I wanted to make one quick mention on the Wilderness Camp. Now, the Wilderness Camp is an extra that I found kind of useful. Now, when you rank up the Naturalist, you will unlock things automatically, like being able to mercy kill animals, being able to track animals at greater distances. But in the optional things that you actually have to spend tokens on, you have some pamphlets to create the new tonics and craft the new tonics, but you have the Wilderness Camp. This one, you have to spend a token on it, and it costs $750 that you buy this from Harriet. And once you get this, you can set up a wilderness camp. In most parts of the map, you just have to set this up in an open area. And what this will do is this will basically spawn a campfire, which you can use that campfire to craft anything that you would at a normal fire. It's disappointing there's no tent um, there at least, but you do have a campfire, which you can use to craft. If you are somewhere that requires a fire, chances are you could probably spawn it there and use it. And that is pretty much it for this guy guide guys if there I hope that I've covered everything that I could possibly I covered I think everything that I could possibly think of in this guide if there's anything else anything that I possibly missed let me know down below but if you guys enjoyed this guide and found it helpful drop a like and if you're new to my channel enjoy like, comment subscribe and if you guys have any other questions post them down below I'll try to reply as many people as I can so thank you guys for watching I'll see you guys in the next one take care everyone